Okay, so let's see how well you actually understand fractions. So without using a calculator, let's see if you can subtract these two fractions. We have 3 over 15 minus 3 over 10. Now we do have a multiple choice question, and let's take a look at our answers. So A is 1 fifth, B is 1 tenth, C is negative 1 fifth, and D is negative 1 tenth. All right, so once again, no calculators, but if you have an answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct solution in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you want a nice, easy-to-understand way to learn math, well, then check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so once again, we're not using our calculators here, and we're trying to subtract these two fractions. We have 3 fifteenths minus 3 tenths. All right, so let's take a look at the answer. The correct answer is D, negative 1 tenth. Now, if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face in the A+. Plus. And if you're like, uh, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I knew this, but uh, it was like 40 years ago. Well, I totally understand. Uh, for me, I was actually learning arithmetic way back in like 1977, uh, the late 70s, mid to late 70s. So if you don't use these skills, you're going to totally forget them, okay? Especially because we use our calculator so much. So don't feel so bad if you forgot this, but let's see if you can... Um, Kind of remember as I get into it. All right, so here is our problem. And the uh, first thing that we want to notice is that we are subtracting two fractions. Now, a lot of people don't like fractions. Okay, when it comes to math, people are generally like fractions. I don't like fractions. I always have to think about the LCD and all that kind of stuff. Well, the LCD, okay, it's not nece always necessary that you think about the LCD when it comes to fractions. Let me kind of break it down this way. So just a real quick thing, if you're having trouble with fractions, you can kind of break up the fraction world, generally speaking, into two components, right? So adding and subtracting, we do the same kind of uh, method, right? It's one procedure. So if you know how to add fractions, then you know how to subtract. Okay, if you know how to subtract fractions, then you know how to add. And if you know how to multiply fractions, well, then you're going to understand how to divide fractions. So when it comes to learning fractions, there's basically uh, two kind of primary procedures, if you will. Now, adding and subtracting fractions is where you have to think about the lowest common denominator. Okay, now that's if you need one. But just in general, this is kind of a, a breakdown of the fraction world. And if you need help with fractions beyond this video, well, I'll give you some specific recommendations. But for those of you that still have to take math exams, and some of you might be saying, that's me, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Well, if you have a math multiple choice uh, question, okay, never leave it blank. If you don't know the answer, just take a guess. So if we look at these answers here, some of you might be saying, well, this denominator is 10, so maybe the answer has 10 as the denominator. And here we have a negative values, so this one looks kind of unique. So maybe some of you guessed this answer. And if that's the case, that's perfectly fine. But, you know, obviously we want to understand the math. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. So here is our problem, right? So 3 fifteenths minus 3 tenths. What we want to think about when we're adding and subtracting fractions, the first thing that we need to look at is the denominators. Okay, so just a quick review. The bottom number of a fraction is called the denominator. The top number is called the numerator, right? So here, uh, 3 is the numerator in both these fractions. This fraction has a denominator of 15, and this uh, fraction has a denominator of 10. Okay, so we need to look at the denominators, and if they are not the same, well, then we have to do some work here. But if we do have the same denominators, adding and, adding and uh, subtracting fractions is quite easy. Let me show you an example. Okay, so 3 fifths minus 1 fifth. Let's take a look at this problem. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the denominators, right? So again, we're talking about adding and subtracting fractions. So here they are the same. Okay, so how do we subtract or add fractions when the denominators are the same? It's super easy. In this case, all we have to do is subtract the respective numerators. So this is going to be 3 minus 1 over that denominator. Okay, the common denominator is 5, so we're just going to write 1, 5 right there. So 3 minus 1, of course, is 2. 
So the answer is going to be 2 fifth. Okay, so this is very, very easy when you have the same denominator. But obviously in our situation, we don't have the same denominator, so we're going to have to fix those up. Okay, so that means that we're going to need the lowest common denominator. So we have 15 and we have 10. We need to find a denominator that both uh, 15 and 10 have something in common with. Okay, Now, there's a bunch of denominators. Uh, they have, matter of fact, there's infinite uh, numbers that these two numbers have in common with, but we want to find the lowest common denominator. Okay, So uh, what do you think we should do? Okay, Now, if you know the LCD, go ahead and put that into the comment section, or some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I got a better idea. Let's make this problem easier. Okay, and I agree with you, we can make this problem easier when it comes to finding the LCD. Because right here, we just don't want to just jump into adding or subtracting fractions or uh, even multiplying or dividing fractions. What you want to do is fully simplify your fractions first, okay, before you even do anything. So here, 3 fifteenths, I can reduce this fraction, and it's going to make this problem easier. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how that's done. So 3 fifteenths. If we simplify or reduce that fraction, that's equivalent to one-fifth. Okay, so this problem right here is equivalent to this problem right here. Right? We didn't break anything. Three-fifteenths and one-fifth uh, are the same value, but uh, we're just kind of writing it uh, differently. In uh, course, here, our denominator is five, which is going to be an, uh, a smaller, easier number to work with. And now, instead of trying to find the LCD between 15 and 10, what we need to do is find the LCD between 5 and 10. Okay. Now, the LCD is a big topic in fractions, and that uh, really I have dedicated videos on that in my YouTube channel. I'm going to give you some other recommendations on how you can improve. But one kind of basic way you can think of what the LCD is, it's the lowest number, okay, that both of these numbers divide into. Okay, so what's the lowest number both 5 and 10 divide into? Okay, now if you're saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I think it's 10, right? Now, when I mean divide into, I mean divide into evenly without a remainder, all right? So the LCD here is 10. Now, over here, it would be different, okay? The LCD would be what? Well, the LCD would be 30, okay? Because here, let's suppose uh, this was not a 3. Let's say this was 7 fifteenths. Now it cannot reduce this fraction. So what's the lowest number that both 15 and 10 divide into? Well, that would be 30. Matter of fact, the math teacher in me just can't resist to show you how to find the LCD. Now, again, it's the lowest um, number that both both of these numbers combined, can divide into. Excuse me. But uh, basically... What you need to do, okay, just a real quick review, is you want to look at the prime factors of each of these denominators. So 15 is what? 5 times 3. This is the, these are the prime factors of 15. Okay, 10 is 2 times 5. So the LCD is going to have all the prime factors in it. Okay, basically we're going to multiply all the unique prime factors. So here we have 5, and here we have a 5 over here. We don't need to repeat these fives. Okay, so we're going to have just one five. Okay, so the fives need to be represented. And then we need a three in our LCD. So that's that three. And then we need a two over here. Okay, so five times three is 15. 15 times two is 30. All right, so just, that's just a quick review of the LCD. There's a lot more to it. But just in case you were wondering, uh, you know, how uh, we actually find technically the LCD, because if these numbers were very large, well, this would be a much more complex problem. That's why it was way better for us to reduce this fraction, because it's much easier to identify the lowest number that both 5 and 10 go into. All right, so the LCD is 10. So what does that mean? Well, it means that we need to write both of these fractions such that the denominator is 10. Well, this one, this fraction here, the uh, denominator is already 10, so we need to fix up this 5 here and make it a 10. So how can we make a 5 into a 10? Okay. Well, if you're saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, what we should do is just multiply that 5 times 2. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to create an equivalent fraction. Okay. So here's 1 fifth, but I want uh, a fraction that is equivalent to 1, fr uh, one fifth, but has a denominator of 2. So we're going to multiply the denominator 
by 2. And if we do that, we also have to multiply the numerator by 2. Okay, So we, we can't really break this fraction, if you will, or, or create a new value, because 2 divided by 2 is 1. So we're really just taking 1 and multiplying by this fraction. So we're not really like changing the value. It's totally OK to do this. So when we do this uh, math, when we multiply fractions, we multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 5 is 10. And of course, we have over here 3 tenths. All right, so now we are super happy. We are ready to subtract these fractions. So let's go to take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, I definitely need your help to continue to grow on YouTube. I've been on YouTube uh, many, many years. Actually, I started my channel, I think, like 14 years ago, something like that. But here's the deal. Uh, when I started my channel like 14 years ago, I didn't do much with it. I maybe post a video here and there. And uh, it wasn't maybe like five, six, seven years ago that I really started putting a lot of energy focus on in uh, YouTube. Okay. Now, the results kind of speak for itself. My channel started to really, really grow. And I think that's kind of uh, representative of learning math. Okay, in other words, if you do a little bit here and there, you're really not going to get too much when it comes to math, right? Math is one of these topics, you know, um, if you want to be successful in it, you have to be immersed in it, all right? And YouTube is the same way. You got to, you know, give it time and you got to work at it every day, all right? So whether it's YouTube or math, you know, you need a commitment, all right? So it's not just even YouTube or math, it's other things, pretty much all things in life, all right? So I just wanted to kind of share with you that if you are struggling in math, it's gonna take some time, all right? So give, your, give yourself time, be patient with yourself, but what you need is clear and understandable instruction. So if you like my teaching style, check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. And we are talking about basic arithmetic. So a quick review of basic arithmetic, a real great course of mine, is called my Math Foundations course. It's just a quick three-chapter course, but I cover fractions, decimals, everything that you forgot way back in primary and elementary school. And if you want to step further, or if you want to kind of review math a step further, well, then check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. Here I cover basic math and uh, algebra, geometry, and some other stuff as well. All right, so please consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that bell notification as well. All right, so let's go ahead and finish up this problem because there is another twist here. So we're very happy. We're like, okay, Mr. YouTube Math Man, we have our LCD, the lowest common denominator, so we're ready to subtract. Yes, indeed we are. But let me ask you here, which of these fractions is greater than the other fraction? In other words, which um, number here, okay, which fractional value is the largest, okay? So let's suppose we had like an inequality symbol, right? So here's just some, uh, this is what? This symbol looks like an L, okay? So this is less than, and then this one is greater than, okay? So you have less than equal to, and then you have greater than equal to, and then of course this is uh, less than and greater than, all right? So hopefully uh, you understand uh, inequality symbols. Another thing about inequality symbols is kind of think of this as uh, alligator teeth, okay? So like little teeth like this, <laughs> kind of like to draw these little sketch. Here's our little alligator. That's a terrible alligator, but you kind of get the idea. It's always gonna eat the larger value, right? So if you forget, uh, you know, your inequality symbols. But anyways, I'm gonna make a point here in a second, which is the larger number, right? So here they have the same denominators and this numerator is larger. So uh, 3 tenths is larger. Now it's very important that you're aware of this before you take the next step. So when we're subtracting, okay, two numbers where you have a small number and then a larger number in this order, let me show you an example. What's gonna happen here, right? So two minus three. What is the answer? Okay, well, the answer is not one, it's negative one. All right, so we're gonna end up with a negative value here. Two minus three is the same thing as two plus a negative three. So if you're not familiar with positive and negative numbers, well, again, this is stuff that I teach in my basic math courses. Also, I have a, a ton of videos on my YouTube channel on this. Okay, so we just need to be aware that we are gonna have a negative value here as our final answer. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish this up. So we have two tenths minus three tenths. Denominators are the same. So we're gonna uh, subtract the respective numerators. That's two minus three or two plus a negative three. That is a negative one. So our final answer is gonna be negative one tenth. Now, some of you might um, be saying, this is a very common question. 
is the answer negative 1 over 10? Because here, my numerator is uh, 2 minus 3, which is negative 1, right? So 2 minus 3 is negative 1, and uh, over this 10, okay? So is this correct here, negative 1 over 10? Do I have to write my answer this way, or do I write it negative 1 tenth? Or does it even make a difference if this was 1 over negative 10, okay? Actually, all of these are equivalent, okay? So you have a negative divided by a positive. Your final uh, answer here, a negative divided by positive is negative. So really to be, uh, you know, uh, the best version of this answer, the way we write it, is a negative 1 tenth. So put this negative sign right there. Okay, so hopefully this little video helped you out with fractions, and definitely don't feel bad if you forgot this stuff. The whole purpose of my videos is to really try to help you kind of remember these uh, skills, and if you're learning math, you know, try to kind of give you some words of encouragement, and that is it takes time, right? But everybody can learn math. It just takes time. So if it seems difficult, that's just part of the process, but what you need is great instruction, commitment, and time. That is kind of, uh, of the formula of being successful in mathematics. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.